Coming up, Taiwan City volunteers and TMA members visit the seniors in Shangxi, New Taipei City. The City Foundation makes home repairs to ensure seniors can live and age gracefully in their own home. Welcome to Dial Headlines. I'm Mary Lee. Thank you for joining us. We start today's program in Taiwan. Though very close to Taipei, over one-fifth of some 9,000 people living in New Taipei City's Shangxi District are seniors 65 years or older. Most live alone or are cared for by foreign caretakers. Thus, city volunteers and TIMA members visit every two months to check on the seniors' health and teach their caretakers how to better care for their charges. <laughs> The senior is not responsive because of her illness. Two months ago when we visited, she didn't say one word at all. Her eyes were closed completely and she just ignored us. After a stroke last year, the senior of New Taipei City's Shuangxi District has been bedridden. But thanks to Cixi Vantia's continuous visits, she finally breaks into a smile. <laughs> Even a small gesture is an improvement. Actually, because of her condition, this grandma is embarrassed to ask for help. I have always felt that she wanted to let us know that there are still many things that she can do by herself. Many seniors here are hard of hearing, but volunteers and TMA members remain patient. Grandma Chen Li Ah Tsai always looked forward to the bi-monthly house calls and will make sure her neighbors know about it. Ninety year old Grandpa Lu is always accompanied by his foreign caretaker Tini, who calls one of the volunteers mommy. Every time I visit, I will talk with them and ask them what they ate. Though walking is hard for him, the senior insists on seeing the volunteers off to express his heartfelt gratitude. October 2nd was Senior Citizens Day in Taiwan, and previous to the occasion, Tsi Ching from Taipei's Shixin University and Taiwan Police College visited a senior home to bring some love and care to seniors. Although shy at first, the students were soon accompanied the seniors in song and various activities, as everyone had a blast. <laughs> Her first time attending such an event, Wang Xing was shy at first. But the enthusiasm of the volunteers and seniors soon had her opening up about her own situation. The tree wants to be still, but the wind is blowing. The son wants to show his respect, but his parents have gone. These lines are something that I can really relate with, as my mother passed away from cancer. I miss my family, and I hope everyone remembers to take good care of their own family. As October 2nd was Senior Citizens Day in Taiwan, Tsi Ching from Shixin University and Taiwan Police College took some time off to join Tsi volunteers for a visit to this nursing home. Among them were several exchange students volunteering for the first time. We sang several songs in Taiwanese as well as some songs in Malaysian. I was quite moved, as we ourselves are far away from home with no one to depend on, and I felt that as we accompanied the seniors, we had someone by our side as well. I met one of the seniors who was from Xi'an, so he and I talked for a while. Seeing him reminded me of my father and grandfather. It made me think that I hope to have more chances like this in the future. The students also take time to offer massages to the seniors, massaging the back of one senior and the hands of another. Seeing these young people willing to be here for them, the seniors were so happy and full of hope. Together, these young students and Siji volunteers have made this year's Senior Citizens Day a time to remember, not only for the seniors, but themselves as well. 
volunteers from China on a cultural exchange to Taiwan. On the third day of their trip, the team stopped at Ciji's Neihu Recycling Station. Among the participants is a senior from Zhejiang's Hangzhou, who before meeting Ciji through her daughter, loved playing the stock market. Ridding herself of her gambling habits, the senior is now walking the Ciji path and even donated a building to serve at Ciji Hangzhou Liaison Office. A group of volunteers from China are visiting Taiwan. Today, one of their stops is the Neihu Recycling Station. A year ago, after listening to Master Jinyan's teachings, 72-year-old Wu Huixian changed her life around. She quit playing the stock market and mahjong. Back in June, she even donated property for Hangzhou Ciji volunteers to use. The office I donated is at the Hangzhou Cultural Center. There is a view of the West Lake in front and a mountain view at the back. It's a great location to attract more bodhisattvas to join us. Volunteer Wu Huixian, who has donated two honorary board memberships, tries her best to set an example for others to follow by doing her part within the organization and helping shoulder Master Jinyan's missions. Back in July, when Master got sick during her tour around Taiwan, she later apologized to everyone because she didn't take care of herself and caused delays in the cultivation of her disciples' wisdom. When I heard that, I was very moved, yet at the same time, it pained me to hear that. A man of few words, senior Zhang Shaowen, connected with Ciji five years ago through the Suzhou recycling station. Returning home to Wuxi, the senior kept Ciji's missions in his heart. I thought 50 cents is an amount I can save per day. In the end, my action motivated others to join me. I influenced around a dozen people to donate. With wisdom in their hearts, these senior bodhisattvas prove it's never too late to put words into practice. In recent years, Taiwan's declining birth rate has been one of the causes of the nation's aging population, which has given rise to a growing trend among senior citizens to age in place, which strives to allow seniors to remain in their regular place of residence. However, certain home environments do not meet the changing needs of aging residents. In our next report, we take a look at what the City Foundation is doing to help improve accessibility for seniors at home so that they can live a more enjoyable life life in dignity and health. Alongside the Huanghe Expressway in Taipei City are blocks of public housing that are over 50 years old. Much like the buildings, most of the seniors who live here are aging as well. I'm full of misery. I've never been so miserable before. A few days ago, I couldn't bear it anymore. I just wanted to end my life. Suffering multiple chronic conditions, Grandma Pong has been living alone in this apartment since her husband passed away. <laughs> Having suffered a fall before, the fear of it happening again haunts the senior. So much so that she only steps outside when she needs to visit the doctor. <laughs> When I fell, it was terrifying. I was on the floor begging people to help me. Just thinking of it makes me scared to leave my house. As Grandmother Pong cannot risk another fall, a group of skilled volunteers installed customized handrails and grab bars in the senior's home. Companies are reluctant to take orders for this because of the low demand. Also because they only come in one size. We have to customize it based on our specs. We have our own factory that can do that. At another public housing complex in Taipei City's Lingxing Borough, 25% of residents are over 65 years and above. Similar to Grandma Pong, many seniors' homes lack safety features. Once fit as a fiddle, Grandfather Wei has been bedridden after suffering a fall last year. He fell out of his bed. I got home and found him and rushed him to the ER. Wow. 
103-year-old Wang Xiaoyi lives in the same building complex and sells sweet tofu pudding for a living. After a few falls, the senior could no longer continue his business. To help, volunteers made modifications to his bathroom to meet his needs. We applied anti-slip tape on the floor. We also installed one railing here, one here and one in the bathroom. This way, he has support on all three sides. It's safer for him. The senior bids farewell to the volunteers with a smile on his face. Although volunteers may not be by their side forever, by improving accessibility for seniors at home, volunteers have given them a chance to enjoy the rest of their golden years with dignity and health. In today's series on depression, we hear from another patient who suffers from the disease and how she learned to cope with the illness. As a young woman, Xiao Meng was taken aback by her sudden renal failure and her obscure future. Instead of learning to deal with her feelings, she sealed them all deep within. Now an adult, Xiao Meng finally figured out why she was always unhappy and has embraced changes so she may live her life to the fullest. A girl dancing in the dark. For the past year or two, the image has been on my mind. I have never told anyone about it, for I fear others would think that I have become delusional. When young, Xiao Meng had the look of a celebrity. She was like a goddess to us in the past. We all dreamed of growing up and looking as beautiful as her. However, when in 11th grade, Xiao Meng began to require dialysis. And because of the steroid intake, her pretty face became puffy. I started receiving four years of dialysis. While under the treatment, I did not plan six months ahead, for I felt if I was deformed, I did not want anything. Believing that she is doomed, Xiaomeng even took solo wedding photos. What common women take for granted, like health, love and marriage or aging normally, to me, life is a winding road, full of bitterness and hardship. She felt that she couldn't do things that other girls her age could do. She was also worried about her parents' well-being, so she decided to seal all those emotions inside. Later, Xiaomeng would receive a kidney transplant and even get married and become a mother. She thought she was finally going to have a normal life, but two episodes of postnatal depression made her realize that she was not well. Just what kind of power can turn her into this? Even when she smiled, she didn't look happy. The smile was just skin deep. It was more like crying, actually. I wanted to understand what was happening to me, so I began to analyze myself and slowly I began to understand. For years I had imprisoned myself somewhere inside. It was as if my body and mind had been separated and each lived on its own. Like a long boat sailing on a vast open sea, Xiaomeng began searching for her destination in life. She took meds regularly and enrolled in classes. Through writing, she communicates with her soul. Through dancing, she learns to accept who she is. Thanks to the support of her family, she no longer feels alone. I just happened to move to Taipei at the time, which gave me the chance to keep her company. We went sightseeing everywhere. I think that was the best support I could give her, to help her do things that she had always wanted to do but didn't. Now, 20 years after her kidney transplant, Xiaomeng needs dialysis once more. She is also coping with marital problems, but now she has a different attitude. I realize that I can live life just like other people. In fact, I can have a better life. Picking up her favorite activity, writing once more, Xiaomeng now has a different outlook. I am walking tall and proud now. I now live life without regrets, but I feel sorry for that girl. 
a 20-year-old who could only cry in silence in the face of fear and terror. Having lived with depression for nearly three decades, this is Xiao Meng's advice for other depression sufferers. You have got to come out, put your clothes on, put your shoes on, open the door and come out. Having found the door, Xiao Meng now knows life is full of light and beauty. Moving to Malaysia, there is a group of active seniors helping to actualize Siji's environmental conservation at the Pataling Jaya Recycling Station in Kuala Lumpur. In the past three years, by helping planet Earth, the group has also established firm friendships with one another. Not knowing how much time they have left to live, these senior bodhisattvas live each day to the fullest and find joy in everything they do. In Malaysia, at the Pataling Jaya Recycling Station, there are 10 seniors over the age of 70 sorting recyclables. It all started three years ago when 82-year-old Liu Su Yuan began participating. I wanted to influence other seniors to leave the house and interact with society while doing something good. Making sure the seniors arrive safely at a recycling station. Volunteers take turns picking them up. Among the drivers is 76-year-old Zhong Su Li a retired elementary school teacher. Today, she has cooked delicious dishes to share with everyone. Before coming to the recycling station, 77-year-old Zhang Yuyin was clouded by the sadness of her husband's passing. When guests would visit my son's place during the Lunar New Year, I would hide in my room and not talk to anyone. Now that I've become a volunteer, I am more talkative. <laughs> The eldest volunteer at the recycling station is 87-year-old Chen Kuizhen. With the encouragement of volunteers, for the past two years, senior Chen regularly visits the recycling station to actualize Siji's conservation mission despite her vision problems. We talk and we laugh. I spend the day in happiness. I always look forward to visiting. I know I don't have much time left on this earth. Since I can still help those who need assistance, then I will be here to do so. I will just keep doing this until my last day, as I don't think I have much time left. These seniors are lonely at home with no one to talk to. After coming to the recycling station, they gain a sense of accomplishment, and others can learn from their experiences as well. Inside a recycling station, each senior's unique story is shared, and in giving selflessly, these seniors live each day to the fullest. At the same Pataling Jaya recycling station, Malaysia Siji Volunteer seizes the opportunity to promote vegetarianism to participating recycling volunteers. Among those who have been inspired to adopt a meatless diet is 74-year-old Jen Bi Zhu, who has been a meat lover for all her life. However, since last February, Jen has had a change of heart. From vowing to eat one meatless meal a day per week to now abstaining from meat five days a week, the senior has kept up her promise. Look at how big my stomach is. I love to eat. For the last few decades, the most important thing for me was always finding tasty things to eat. I am greedy that way. Even while watching TV, Jin Bi Zhu was able to put away a whole duck that would change after she met city volunteer Jin Guo Xiong in 2013. I've eaten vegetarian for over a decade. If we find a senior who is still eating a lot of meat and fish, we worry about their health. In my family, my father didn't eat vegetables or fruit. He ate meat pork, barbecue, things like that. He would bring a ton of meat home for us to eat. As Zhen Bi Zhu and Zhen Guo Xiong grew closer, Zhen invited Zhen to the Padaling Jaya recycling point. Now he makes it a point to pick her up every week. The people there are great. Everyone is really kind-hearted and willing to help others. I encourage them to first start from one day a week. On Wednesday, they come to do recycling, and that is one more day. Altogether, two days a week, eight days a month. Little by little, now she's up to five days a week. Recycling from February last year, under the guidance of other recycling volunteers, Jin is slowly changing her meat-eating ways. Everyone can cook up a tasty dish, even Sister Su Bai. Their cakes are great. They can cook up a lot of different and tasty dishes. 
with tofu inside or other ingredients. With the recycling volunteers preparing such delicious vegetarian food, Jen has all the more reason to go vegetarian. I have achieved what I decided to do. However, for someone like me, it is more difficult as I need to change my former habits. That's not something easy to do. So many decades, how could that be easy to change? Now that I am eating vegetarian, my husband is much happier. He no longer has to supervise me every day, and we argue much less as a result. Through the continued encouragement of Tsuji volunteers, Zhen Biju will surely continue to embrace vegetarianism and reap the benefits of a vegetarian diet. Indonesia is an archipelago made up of more than 10,000 islands. On its more remote islands are many who require a bit of extra care. Like always, Indonesia Tsuji volunteers have been doing their part with their recent visit to a mental care facility in West Java. In what was their first visit, the volunteers prepared lunch for the facility's 3,000 patients, signaling the start of what will surely be a long, fruitful partnership. This mental care facility was built by the Galu Foundation as the sole facility of its kind in West Java for the past 30-plus years. It has offered psychiatric care for all those in need, regardless of their financial status. Currently, the facility cares for around 300 patients. Our foundation works to help people. Sometimes people will come with a bag of rice to give on behalf of our patients. Also, we receive rice from the government. Every two weeks, the hospital will mix up a traditional medicinal drink to help soothe the patient's symptoms. The patients love it. Among other herbs, I add cooling leaves and coconut water. It makes for a remarkably refreshing and tasty drink and helps with insomnia. Following their arrival, Tsuji volunteers cook up some Indonesian spiced vegetarian food for the day's lunch. We hope Tsuji will continue to help us and assist in other areas as well. We offer our blessings to the Tsuji volunteers and hope they will give our regards to Master Zheng Yin. She taught us how to share the love. The care facility also offers jobs for those who are eventually released. One couple who met in the facility have stayed on to work. We follow Mr. Suhanda and have stayed here to work. He is like a father to us and we children to him. We hope to always be by his side. We are so thankful we can be there. The longer we are here, the more used to it we are. As they deliver the lunches, volunteers come to understand the fine line the facility walks financially by not charging its patients. With this in mind, volunteers know that they will be back again to help this facility continue carrying out its good deeds. The Nine Emperor Gods Festival at the beginning of the lunar September is a Buddhist celebration in Thailand where disciples keep to a vegetarian diet throughout the nine-day festivities. Since the year 2009, Tsuji volunteers have taken advantage of the occasion to provide meatless meals as a way to promote a vegetarian diet. We will leave you with these images at the end of the show. Thank you for watching Dia Headlines. Goodbye.